The Senate will now be in session. All rise for the arrival of the Honorable Senate President and the Senators of the Republic of the Philippines. The Senate capped off a productive session before the Holy Week break by introducing, deliberating on, and passing several key measures of national importance. The Senate approved on third and final reading Senate Bill No. 2572, creating the Bulacan Special Economic Zone and Free Port. The bill established the Bulacan Eco Zone, which will host the new Manila International Airport in the province of Bulacan. Through our collective brainstorming, we have crafted a vastly improved bill that adheres to the constitutional provisions on land conversion, that balances economic growth with environmental protection, and that warrants greater LGU representation at its helm. The Senate also approved on third reading local bills establishing a senior high school in Progressive Village 3 in Barangay Bayanan, Baco or Cavite, and an elementary school in Progressive 15 in Barangay Molino 2, Baco or Cavite. The Senate also gave its nod to local bills creating district engineering offices in the provinces of Bulacan and Iloilo. In adopted resolution number 113, the Senate concurs in the ratification of the 2005 Convention on the Protection and Promotion of the Diversity of Cultural Expressions. Meanwhile, the Senate approved on second reading a local bill amending Republic Act 10583 or the Mountain Province State College. Senator Cincha Villar sponsored 11 bills declaring ecological vital areas in the country as additional protected areas under the existing National Integrated Protected Area Systems. Senator Francis Chis Escudero pushed for the passage of Senate Bill No. 2596 or Abogado para sa Bayan Bill. And Senate Bill No. 2597, which seeks to strengthen the Legal Education Board and amend Republic Act No. 7662, otherwise known as the Legal Education Reform Act of 1993. In addition, Escudero also sponsored Senate Bill No. 2568, which seeks to institutionalize the expanded tertiary education equivalency and accreditation program, Senate Bill No. 2569, which seeks to establish a tripartite council addressing unemployment, underemployment, and job skills mismatch, and Senate Bill No. 2598, which strengthens the mental health services of state universities and colleges. Escudero also pushed for the passage of a bill seeking to establish the University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines College of Medicine in Cagayan de Oro City. Say the passage of the measure is crucial toward unlocking the immense potential of livestock, poultry, and dairy industry, Senator Cincha A. Villar sponsored Senate Bill No. 2558. Through Senate Bill No. 2558, we will set a clear and strategic direction for the LPD industry, strengthen the organizational structure and institutional capacity of relevant industries and ensure that adequate resources are provided to support the growth and competitiveness of the industry. Senator Winga Chalian sponsored Senate Bill No. 2575 or an act ensuring the alignment of basic education and early childhood care and development. The bill seeks to amend Republic Act No. 10410, otherwise known as the Early Years Act of 2013. By passing this proposed measure, we are not merely preparing our young children for their educational journey, we are also preparing them to succeed in the future as next leaders of our nation. The Senate ratified the Bicameral Conference Committee reports on Senate Bill No. 2449 and House Bill No. 8327 or the Philippine National Police Organizational Reform Act, Senate Bill No. 2492 and House Bill No. 7819 or the Philippine Maritime Zones Act, and Senate Bill No. 2386 and House Bill No. 6558 or the Real Property Valuation and Assessment Reform Act. Senator Grace Poe renewed her call for the passage of Senate Bill No. 2458, which seeks to improve animal welfare in the country. Poe made the call in the wake of the brutal killing of a golden retriever named Kilua in Bato, Camarines Sur. For his part, Senate President Juan Miguel Mix F. Zubiri expressed his commitment to make the revised Animal Welfare Act a priority measure of the Senate. Senator Rafi Tulfo bared the existence of resorts outside Mount Apo buffer zones that were allowed to operate by the Protected Area Management Board. 
apart from the illegal structures, Tulfo expressed alarm over the other problems that Mount Apo is facing such as land conversion for settlement, water pollution, introduction of foreign exotic species, and destructive and inappropriate livelihood practices among others. Senate Deputy Minority Leader Risa Honteveros raised serious concerns over the disturbing awarding of the 18.7 billion peso lease contract for automatic voting machines for the 2025 national and local elections to a loan bidder. Senator Sonia Angara led the subcommittee on the rationalization of the mining fiscal regime hearing on the local bill seeking to enhance the fiscal regime for the mining industry. The Committee on Sports, chaired by Senator Christopher Lawrence Bongo, looked into allegations of game-fixing in professional and amateur sports. Senator Winga Chalian lamented the lack of DepEd guidelines qualifying the senior high school voucher program during the Committee on Basic Education hearing on the implementation of the Expanded Government Assistance to Students and Teachers in Private Education Act. The Commission on Appointments led by Senate President and CA Chairman Juan Miguel Mix Evzubiri confirmed the ad interim appointments of 129 generals and senior officers of the armed forces of the Philippines. Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa ordered the arrest of former police major Alan de Castro, one of the suspects in the disappearance of beauty queen Catherine Camillo. The arrest came after the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs cited de Castro in contempt for repeatedly lying while under oath during the Senate hearing. Senator Aimee Marcos presided over the Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation hearing to determine the status of the preparations of two major electoral exercises to be held in 2025, the national and local elections and the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections. Senator Joseph Victor J.V. Ejercito sought safeguards to ensure that due process is followed for indigents affected by the government's resettlement program during the Committee on Urban Planning, Housing and Resettlement hearing. Senator Risa Honteveros led the Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations and Gender Equality in tackling bills seeking to strengthen existing laws protecting women and children against violence and sexual harassment. The Committee on Constitutional Amendments and Revision of Codes, chaired by Senator Robin Hood Padilla, tackled two bills seeking to declare July 27 of every year as a special national non-working holiday in commemoration of the founding anniversary of Iglesia Ni Cristo. Senator Rafi Tulfo demanded the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office or PCSO to explain how a lone better won the Lotto Games multiple times during their assumption of the Committee on Games and Amusement Subcommittee inquiry on the integrity and trustworthiness of the agency. The Special Committee on Philippine Maritime and Admiralty Zones, chaired by Senator Francis Tolentino, held a public consultation on Senate Bill No. 654 or the proposed Philippine Navy Archipelagic Defense Act. Senate Bill No. 654 seeks to empower the Philippine Navy by establishing forward operating bases in the sites identified by the Philippine Navy in its Strategic Basing Plan 2040 for its bases and installations. The Senate capped off the International Women's Month celebration by holding a 3-kilometer fun run. Senate officials and employees joined the race to make a unique statement for women empowerment.